just drunk. Looks like I'm due for another list video that's sure to enrage everyone. This time I'm going to look at five games that I think are overhyped and five that I think are underhyped. Now you might be thinking, uh, isn't this entire channel about that? Well yeah, it is, but I figure not everyone has time to slog through over 100 videos, so I'm going to boil down 10 games in particular that stand out to me just to save you, the viewer, some time. Just a quick note here about what I mean by overhyped and underhyped. Overhyped can mean a couple things. Either the game isn't as good as it's been touted to be over the past 20 years and it hasn't held up over time, or a game that seems like it should be good on paper but it just isn't, or the same concepts and mechanics were executed much better in other similar games. For underhyped, I just mean games that should be considered among the very best of their kind, but aren't for whatever reason. Now, when I think of overhyped Super Nintendo games, the first one that comes to mind is Demon's Crest. This game has great control, great graphics, some cool ideas, and an overall badass presentation. But the level design and the way the game is structured are two huge flaws that I really can't get around. You gotta return to one of the same five levels over and over and over again, and that's if you're lucky enough to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go in the first place. It doesn't help that the levels themselves are pretty blah in layout. I would avoid this game, I just don't think it's worth it. An underhyped action platformer is Sparkster. I've talked about this game quite a bit on this channel so far, but not quite enough in my opinion, because start to finish, this game kicks ass. Yeah, I'll agree the Rocket Knight Adventures games on Genesis are just a hair better, but Sparkster is still damn good. It's super fast and responsive. Your character is overpowered a bit, but you always feel in control, and there's always a challenge as some of these bosses can be pretty dang hard. Sparkster is 90s Konami at its finest, a really well-made title. The next overhyped game I'll get to is one I did a video on not too long ago, Kirby's Dream Land 3. Maybe overhyped isn't the right word here, but you might go into this game expecting a lot. By no means is it a bad game, but it's easy to set your expectations sky high for this one if you've ever played the Kirby's Dream Land games for Game Boy, Kirby's Adventure for NES, or Kirby's Superstar for Super Nintendo. Every one of those games is a lot more fun than Kirby's Dream Land 3, believe me. This game just feels kind of slow and sluggish, and there really isn't a whole lot to set it apart from its peers. On paper, this game sounds like it should be good, especially since it came out very late in the Super Nintendo lifespan, but even if you like Kirby, feel free to skip this one and just stick to the classics. Back to underhyped, one game I've always considered a classic is Legend of the Mystical Ninja. If I had to make a list, this would definitely make my top 25 Super Nintendo games list, even if you included Super Famicom games. This has absolutely everything, great mechanics, a distinct visual style, fantastic music, a buttload of gameplay variety, and replay value out the yin-yang, and you can play with a second player. Its one major flaw, the absurd password system, has been rendered obsolete because it's on the Wii U Virtual Console. So if you have a chance, go get this game. You won't be disappointed. The next overhyped game I have to mention is Mega Man X3. Again, like Kirby's Dream Land 3, this isn't a bad game, it's Mega Man, how bad could it be? But it really falls short of the standard that Mega Man X and X2 set. The level design isn't up to snuff. Each level is very long and very dull, with all sorts of big empty gaps sitting there, evidently just to fill space. You see the same enemies over and over, and that really gives off a vibe like the developers just mailed this one in. Mega Man X3 is legitimately rare, there aren't too many copies out there, but do not confuse rare with great. I'd only recommend it if you're a collector. Mega Man X and X2 are both much better games. Back to underhyped, I really think King of Dragons is easily one of the best beat-em-ups of the 16-bit era. It got kinda lost in the shuffle back at the time of its release, since King of Dragons, Knights of the Round, and Magic Sword were all released within a couple years of each other, but yeah, here's a game where you definitely get your money's worth. There's five characters with five distinctly different fighting styles, there's 26 total levels, the game is multiplayer, and of course they nailed all the basic game mechanic stuff like hit detection and a unique way to use special moves. The point is, King of Dragons should be talked about more because it's damn good. Okay, for this next overhyped game, I'm really gonna get a lot of shit, because it's Donkey Kong Country. I just mean the original game, not the series. I really feel like the first game is a bit outdated. Yes, of course, it's still a fine game on its own, but no way would I ever recommend it over the second or third games of the series. Let's face it, trying to get 100% in Donkey Kong Country is laughable. In some spots, there's just zero intuition in locating some of the hidden areas. You're just jumping down random pits like an idiot, hoping to find something. That's totally unlike Diddy's Conquest. That game's a hell of a lot more intuitive. The boss battles in the first game are also very dull and pretty uninspired. The second and third games just have so much more to offer. Donkey Kong Country was groundbreaking and all that, but it's been left in the dust. There, I said it. I insulted your precious Donkey Kong Country. Now hurry up and hit the dislike button and call me a monkey's uncle or whatever. 
Back to underhyped games, I'll pick out an old favorite of mine, Top Gear. When it comes to racing games, the focus for Super Nintendo is usually on Super Mario Kart or F-Zero, and rightfully so. But Top Gear is effing great. It's no-frills, straight-ahead arcade-style racing, with a tremendous sense of speed and great music. Plus, this game is actually kind of hard against the computer, too, and I appreciate that. For instance, I very rarely finish first in the South America course, for instance. That one always kicks my ass. And of course, this game is multiplayer as well, so there's that. This is a classic case of a game, looking kind of ordinary on the surface, but the feel of speed and the total presentation here bring it up several notches. Back to overhyped, I'm gonna go a little off the map here with Tales of Fantasia for Super Famicom. Its story and dialogue in my opinion are very, very ordinary and unmemorable. The battle system is okay, but if you like this real-time style of combat, you could argue Star Ocean does a much better job executing that. The graphics and soundtrack are certainly top-notch, make no mistake about that. But if you're looking through some of the Japan-only RPGs that you haven't played yet, there are much better options out there, like Live a Live, Bahamut Lagoon, Seiken Tetsu 3, Treasure of the Rudras, I could go on and on. I'm just saying, Tales of Fantasia should probably be further down your list. And last, my next pick for Underhyped is Final Fantasy V. This one gets kind of lost in the shuffle a bit. It gets overshadowed by the 4th and 6th entries in the series, and that's too bad because the 5th edition is not only very good, it's a unique departure from what you'd expect from a Final Fantasy game. Yup, that's right, this is the Final Fantasy game with the job system, where you eventually have up to 22 different jobs you can pick from to apply to your party. Knights, mages, thieves, monks, ninjas, rangers, and a lot more. The best part of this is all the customization and combos you can apply, leaving a shit ton of options available to you. And you can even switch jobs at will, which is very convenient. Final Fantasy V also stands out because the story is a lot more lighthearted, with the presentation, dialogue, and sprite animations veering more toward humor, and I certainly appreciate that. Alright, there you go, that's it. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.